Hi everyone, it's the Veiled Catholic, your sister in Christ. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This video is titled, Who is Saint Maroon? Mar Maroon in Syriac was born in 350 AD and died 410 AD. Saint Maroon chose its solitary abode not far from the city of Cyrus in Syria. It is believed that the place was called Kefar Nabu on the mountain of Ol Yam Yambos, making it the cradle of the Maronite movement and there in the spirit of mortification. He lived mainly in the open air. He had indeed a little hunt, hut covered with goat skin to shelter him in case of need but he very seldom made use of it. Finding the ruins of the heathen temple, he dedicated it to the true, to the, uh, true God and made it his house of prayer. Um, Trisostom, Trisostom, who had a great regard for him, wrote to him from, from Cucusis, the place of his banishment and recommending himself to his prayer begging to hear from him as often as possible maroon was a disciple of saint zebinus he drew great crowds by his spiritual wisdom he trained many hermits and monks and founded three monasteries it is believed the maronites take their name from Bait Maroon Monastery where a church was erected over his tomb. His fast day is February 9th. All that is known about Maroon, the spiritual father and protector of the Maronites, comes from Theodret, the Bishop of Cyrus. In approximately 444, Theodret undertook the project of writing a religious history about his religion. Theodret never drew, never knew Maroon personally, but only though the disciples of his holy man. He described Maroon as the one who was has planted for God the garden which flourishes now in the region of Cyrus. Little is known of the birth of or youth of Maroon because theocrat was unconcerned about the aspect of his life he felt that maroon was a man born not for this world but for heaven in his description of being of the beginning the maroon's life theodorus asserts that maroon had already increased the number of saints in heaven according to history maroon was never satisfied with the orden ordinary practices of asceticism but was always seeking for new ways to accumulate all the treasures of wisdom. Maroon was the spiritual leader not only of the hermits who lived near him but also of the Christian faithful in the area. He used to counsel them, heal their body, bodily and spiritual ills. All of these apostolic and Devior's manifested wisdom and holiness of the hermit Maroon. Some hold the opinion that Maroon and John Christostom studied together in Antioch before 398, and that the famous letter sent by Saint Christ John, sent by John Christostom, was indeed sent to this hermit Maroon and not to some other anchorite with the same name. If the monk uh, referred to in this letter is from the region of Cyrus, it is indeed our spiritual father Maroon. The date of Maroon's death is placed somewhere between 407 and 423. Because of his great popularity among the people, riots broke out at the time of his death because of 
everyone wanted to save his remains in their village. It was in the milieu of hermits and ascetics that we learn of Saint Maroon. Maroon decided to leave the world and seek solitude on top of a mountain, probably somewhere south of Cyrus and northwest of Aleppo. He had been a disciple of Hermit Zebinas, who was known for his um, assiduousness in prayer, spending all day and all night at it. Our principal historical source of the life of Maroon is Theodoret, Bishop of Cyrus, 1393 to 466, who wrote the religious history of Syriac Aztecism. Theodoret tells us that the mountain Maroon chose had been sacred to pagans. He converted a pagan temple and that he found there into a church which he dedicated to the true God. Maroon lived in a stour life. While he erected a small tent for shelter, he rarely used it and spent most of his time in the open air as a form of mortification. We were told that Maroon was not satisfied with the ordinary exercises of piety, but added to them. He would often spend the whole night standing in prayer. He practiced numerous other penances and fasted for weeks on end. Maroon became known for the gift of miracles and attracted many people, even from great distances. He accomplished many cures and exorcisms. Theodorant goes on to say, he cured only informalities of the body but applied suitable treatment to the soul as well, healing this man's greed and that man's anger, to this man supplying teaching and self-control and to that providing lesson in justice correcting this man's intemperance and shaking up another man's sloth. Maroon attacked a number of disciples for whom he became a spiritual father. Maroon attracted a number of disciples for whom he became a spiritual father. Theodoret summarized the work of Maroon in poetic fashion by cultivating that spiritual field he raised in it many wonderful plants of the realm of virtues. Cultivating and offering to God this marvelous garden that now flourishes in the region of Cyrus. We are told that after the death of Maroon the people of various neighboring villages fought over his body. It was the belief that having a holy person buried close to close by would bring blessings and cures on the inhabitants. Theodore informs us that the inhabitants of the nearest and largest village came in great numbers, took possession of the body, and built over it a magnificent church. While we don't know the exact location, it was probably between Aleppo and Cyrus. Theodore tells us that the relics of Maroon are venerated with great public solemnity in his day and are the occasion of many miracles. The other historical source we have about Saint Maroon is the letter addressed to him by Saint John Chrysostom. Chrysostom had been exiled from the Patriarch of Constantinople to Cyrus in Armenia. From there he wrote to Maroon, priest and solitary, telling him that he is joined to him in the bound of charity and affliction and is comforted by the news he hears about Maroon's holy life. He is concerned about his health and asks for his prayers. We believe that the letter was written around 604. Based on the writings of Theodore and Christostom, we usually date St. Maroon's life from 350, 350 to 410, although some have placed his death as late as 423. 
The Maronite Church formerly celebrated the fest of this great saint on January 5th. This is the day in which the Church of Kafari, Kafari was um, consecrated in his honor. However, in the 17th century, the fest of transferred the fest was transferred to February 9th. Lebanon has proclaimed Maroon as its patron saint, and Pope Benedict XVI granted a plen plenary indulgence to everyone who visited a Maronite church on February 9th. The gospel tells us that a tree is known by its fruits, and we know from Theodore that the garden of Maroon flourished over after his death. One is able to number approximately 20 saints among Maroon's disciples, three whom were women. Theodore describes this disciples of Maroon with these words. These anchorites, anchorites were virtuous and heroic, totally dedicated to a life of contempt prayer. They were strangers to any other consideration in the world. They were obedient to church authority and tried to imitate their preceder, pre, predecessor in their exercises of authority. At times, their acts of penance and mortification were excessive, but they were always obedient to uh, ecclesiastical authority. After the Council of Chalcedon, Bishop Theodore worked to construct the famous monastery of St. Maroon, in addition to being a stronghold for the defense of the teachings of the Council of Chaldron, this monastery was for a long time the center of the culture, cultural and theological heritage of Antioch. Um, this is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Um, please comment below on what you think about St. Maroon's story. And... Peace and blessings in Jesus' name.